Hi everyone, it's Michelle from Country Morning Creations and I'm getting ready to make an envelope to go in the back of this small journal that I've made and I thought, you know what, I'll just record a tutorial. And the reason I'm doing that is because the first time I used this uh, We Are Memory Keepers punch board, I didn't quite understand what I was supposed to do. I read the directions, but to me they weren't quite perfectly clear. But I just want to show you how easy it is to use this. So I've already decided that I'm going to do the um, three and a half by five inch. And you'll see here that it says to cut the paper seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And then I'm gonna use the three and one eighths um, score line, so up in here. So I'm gonna start out, I'm gonna set this aside for right now. And this was a journal that I will have already posted a flip through of. Um, so if you want to see the whole journal, you can go back into my other videos and see what that was. But for right now, um, I decided, I was just going to show you this real quick. I decided that I wanted it to be three inches wide, because or three and three and a half. Was it three and a half? Yeah, three and a half inches wide, so it'll fit down in a pocket by five inches tall. Correct, because five and a half inches is going to be sticking out of the top if I try to put it in a pocket. So those were the measurements I decided on. So we're going to make the paper, again, double checking. Are we all in agreement? I'm making it seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter for the three and a half by five inch. And so, yep, seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. So I always like to double check things, and even when I double check things, sometimes I still get it wrong. So let's go for, let's find seven and a quarter. There's my seven and a quarter. Eek, trying to line my paper up just right. Seven and a quarter, so we have that. And then I'm going to just turn the paper and measure seven and a quarter again. The other funny thing I'll share with you is the name of this company is Fiskers. And I started using Fisker scissors when I was little. I mean, probably eight or nine I started sewing and I used Fisker scissors back then. I have literally called it Friskers. <laughs> forever and so now I know it's Fiskers and I don't know why I called it Friskers but I pronounce things wrong all the time. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to <coughs> line it up first this way on the three and one eighths inch which is what it says right here. So it says three and one eighths inch that's the score line and if you look up here there is the three and one eighths inch line, and so we're going to line this up with that three and one eighths inch. And so I am going to take this and I am going to punch it. Wait, punch and score. So punch, and then we're gonna go right into here and score. Now, the next thing you need to do, which I thought I had to go back, I thought I was supposed to go back to this three and an eighths, and you'll see that you cro oh, cross things over. That's not what you're supposed to do. You need to reline up this score line with this piece right here, and you're going to punch it again and score it again. Let me see if I can get in there, yep. And then we're gonna simply line this up again with that score line. So you see how this comes out this way? And we're going to score it again. And one more time, we're gonna turn this one last time and make sure it's all lined up with that. Punch. And then score. So now you can see that I have all these wonderful score marks that match up with all of these holes. They also recommend that you go back now and round all your corners and the other side punches the other direction. So now we just go around and clip these corners. Whoops, that didn't clip at all. 
Let's try that again. There we go. And then do this one. And we'll do this one. Now, what I'm going to show you, and this is kind of partly up to you as to how you want to do this. Um, when you fold everything in, you get this kind of funky piece up here. If you don't want that, you could cut that across. I'm not sure what happened there. There we go. Um, that looks a little bit better. So I think what I am simply going to do is cut that straight across there. Nah, I'm just going to leave it, I think, for right now. So I'm going to just leave that, and then I am going to just glue these edges down. And I'm not going to glue this part down at all. And I am using the Fabri-Tac. I know a lot of people have gone to the glitter glue. Very popular right now, but um, when I looked at it online, yes, it's not as toxic and all of that, but for me, it was about the same cost ounce for ounce as the Fabri-Tac, and I already have the Fabri-Tac, so I thought, you know what, I am just going to stick with this for now. So just fold that up and let that dry a little bit, and then you'll see that you have a nice envelope. And now, hopefully, the final reveal, hopefully, that will just fit neatly in the back. I wanted an envelope to hold a bunch of my little pieces. There you go. So that'll fit really nicely in the back. Um, I may glue this down, but I think I want something that I can pull out because I have a lot of stickers and uh, little pieces, things like this, that I may decide to add into my journal later. And so I wanted an envelope in which to put all of this stuff. And that's where that's that envelope and then I can just stick it in there and huh, maybe I'll glue her to the envelope. So anyway, I hope that this tutorial helps you uh, the next time you want to use your punch board or if you've bought one and you've had it sitting around and you said I have no idea how to use this, hopefully now I've inspired you to be creative today.